Route 4's center of gravity lies naturally just about halfway between Portsmouth and Concord in the town of Northwood, New Hampshire. Also a center of Antique Alley, it's an area that has attracted many artists and craftspeople too. It feels very rural and I like that. I thought I would miss the ocean, but I can go to Portsmouth whenever I want to. Susan Pratt-Smith moved to Northwood with her late husband Gary in 1980. Previously a songwriter and performer in Portsmouth, she's renowned today as a visual artist, particularly for her work with dichroic glass, glass that displays different colors depending on light conditions. With the stained glass, the process is very satisfying. It takes a long time and it's actually relaxing. Pratt Smith is presently working on some new stained glass windows for St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Concord. You've already sketched out exactly what the shapes and forms are. Yes. And then you put the glass and cut them to fit. So it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, really. Exactly. In her current commission, she was asked to incorporate her region's natural landscape. That comes easily for Pratt Smith, who finds influence and inspiration in the woods and hills of this area, as did her late husband, Gary Haven Smith, whose striking stone sculptures dot the land here. The birds and the animals, I guess it just makes you feel very integrated with the natural world. But what's even more remarkable than how relatively wooded and unspoiled this area is, is where it is. In southeastern New Hampshire, only 25 miles from the state's largest city. But that level of land preservation hasn't happened by accident. Southeastern New Hampshire is under tremendous pressure from development, but huge parts of it have been protected and are available for folks to enjoy. Brian Hart is executive director of SALT, Southeast Land Trust, a member-supported nonprofit that works with communities in southern New Hampshire to protect and sustain significant lands. We do that through ownership of land and through conservation easements on land. And to date, we've protected about 25,000 acres of land here in our region. In 2019, we visited one of Celt's newest successes, Stonehouse Forest in Barrington, New Hampshire. 230 acres saved from development, now open to the public. Of course, it helps to have a landowner who's willing to have the land be acquired by an organization like Celt. Exactly. It takes a willing landowner, a, a partner like a land trust like Celt, and it takes the stars aligning for that opportunity to come together. Which perfectly describes Celt's biggest move yet the purchase of the Burley family's 250-year-old farm on 237 acres of fields and woods in Epping, New Hampshire. Also, sitting on this landscape of Burley Farms with 200 plus acres of fields, wetlands, I mean, it's like an outdoor classroom waiting to be used. A bit further northwest at Epsom, New Hampshire's McClary Hill Farm, Dave Stewart is an example of a land owner who worked with another New Hampshire land trust in creating an easement for land preservation. You walk across the street, you start, and you can go for miles you know, on property that's undeveloped. Just made logical sense that let's tie it up with an easement. And it, it felt right. The easement is with Bear Paw Regional Greenways, a nonprofit land trust that serves 11 towns surrounding Route 4 in connecting and conserving a whole network of open spaces in the region. Preserving farmland is really significant for our area. And this property, in addition to having really significant agricultural values, um, connects to a lot of other conservation land and open space in the area. But farming, never easy, was tough here. A friend had started a brewery locally on his farm and it seemed you know I, I was familiar with brewing and I had the structure the building had been built so I was like why not so in 2018 Dave Stewart and his partner Lois Shea transitioned from farming to brewing we're a nano brewery small batches and I think I, it probably I'd say we're a destination beer is nice but you are coming for an experience that's different than a lot of other places that's safe to say Blasty Bow Brewing Company is uniquely small, cozy, and in a short time has attracted a devoted following for its rural, unspoiled setting, its convivial atmosphere, its live music, and, oh yeah, the beer. So this is the Blasty Bow Amber. Yes, it is. Okay. It's not as hoppy as a, an IPA. It's primarily malty. That's good. 
That's good. It's an easy drinking beer. Even better, thanks to this local brewer and a local land trust, the natural setting here that folks seem to savor as much as the beer will look the same for a long time. There are moose out there, there are bear out there, loads of deer. It's great. I love being able to look at it. It just feels nice to know that it's not going to be developed. <laughs> and if you're like me, you may be wondering where the name Blasty Bow comes from. Well, according to Dave, it's a Newfoundland term that means a dry stick of kindling used to start a fire. And Dave says not only did they like the name, yeah. the domain name was available. So oh, that worked really? out really well. <laughs> it worked out well. <laughs>